Welcome to the Daily Smith Figure Swat Devotional Podcast. My name is Victoria Iyok and I am your host. Let us start with prayer as usual. Father Lord, God Almighty, King of Glory, we thank you for your word. We thank you for in Christ Jesus we have life. Lord, as we read your word, help us understand it and put it in practice. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The title of today's message is The New Covenant. The title of today's message is The New Covenant. We are going to read Luke chapter 22 verse 20 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 up to verse 18 in the New King James Version. So let us start with the first scripture for today which is Luke chapter 22 verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 3 to verse 18. Also in the New King James Version. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the earth. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit be not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious has no, had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, today we are talking about the new covenant. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are in the new covenant. There's a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. To have a better idea of what the old covenant is, I would invite you to read the Old Testament and specifically to go into like the Ten Commandments and the part where Moses receives the Ten Commandments from the Lord and gives them to the people and explains to them also all the laws and ordinances that they are going to follow. And explains to them the fact that if they do not follow these laws and 
Our nine things, they are going to be cursed, but that if they follow them, they are going to be blessed. And then the new covenant is what we have in Christ Jesus, which means that Christ died for our sins and he rose again so that we may live in him and he sent his Holy Spirit to live in us. And we know that we will spend eternity with him because he paid the price for our forgiveness and for our salvation. And we enjoy the blessings because he obeyed the law perfectly. So basically, it is a little summary of the new covenant versus the old covenant. Now, the new covenant is way more glorious than the old covenant, and that's what we read through the, the previous verses. But what does it entail for you to be in the new covenant? And that's what we're going to highlight today, a few keys, key points to what it means, the fact that you are in the new covenant. First, it means that you are saved. You are going to spend eternity with Christ Jesus in heaven. Second, it also means that I'm not ranking them in order of importance. I'm just making a list. Second, it means that the Holy Spirit has filled you um, if you have already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are nevertheless sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of... of um, on to the day of salvation, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Um, what else does it mean? It means also that you have freedom to obey God. You can see that in Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen. You are f- now f- you've been set free from sin, and you've become a slave to righteousness. That one is in Romans chapter 6, I believe. And now you have, you have freedom in Christ Jesus, freedom to obey the word of God instead of obeying sin, which was your master before you came to Christ. In the new covenant, you are a living epistle, a letter of Christ, which means that the law is the law, like the commandments of God, what God wants you to do, what God wants you to follow, is no more like on tablets. It's in you. It's written in your heart, as in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. He's written his law inside. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33, sorry. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. His law is inside your mind and it is written in your heart. It means that... Um, you have the word of God in you. It does not mean that you should not read your Bible because there are people, yes, I heard people say that now that they have like the word of God in them, the law of the Lord in them, they don't need to read your Bibles anymore. And that's how they go into error because the devil will come with seducing voices, with false doctrines, and instead of comparing it to scriptures, they are going to say that they already have the word of God in them, so they are going to follow follow the sinful voice of the devil, and that's how they err from the right path, because because they were not anymore checking the scriptures. You should, you should read the Bible every day, as I usually say. What else? Now that you are in the new covenant, you love to do God's will. It is not like you are being forced. It's not you. Not you are not enjoying it. You are enjoying it. You enjoy doing God's will. So it becomes a pleasure for you to read the Word of God every day, to obey, to listen to sermons, to like attend church or biblical meetings, to like help the poor and the needy, to. Pray for the sick to do the works of Jesus, basically. To do the works of Jesus, basically. It becomes a pleasure for you to, like, to just be obeying, obedient to him, to be obeying God and to worship him and to talk about the Lord, to preach the gospel, to talk about Jesus. It becomes, like, normal for you because you are a new creature, because the Holy Spirit is in you, because it's not you who does those works, but it's God who lives in you. And God works in you, but to will and to do for his good pleasure, as in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And because the Bible says that as he is, as Christ is, so are you in this world and not in the next world, but this world, you also love righteousness and you hate wickedness. You love righteousness and you hate sin. And as Jesus said in John 14, 
in John 14 verse 30 uh, the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. It's the same for you when the Holy Spirit really reigns in your life. The devil has nothing to find in you because you have been free from sin. You've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So the devil really has nothing in you. And with an open face you behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord and you are changed into the same image as the Lord from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So when you are in the new covenant, it's not the same as in the old covenant. You have been transformed. You have been recreated into the image of Christ. This is the state of your spirit. Your spirit is recreated exactly like Jesus. Now you may not see it because your behavior does not reflect it. And if your behavior does not reflect it, it is because you do not know it. And when I say no, it means that you, your mind, your soul, you've not transformed. You've not been transformed by the renewal of your mind such that it doesn't show through your soul and through your attitude. But if you read the Bible and you accept that this is who you are in Christ Jesus, in the new covenant, then it's going to transform your soul. Your, your mind is going to be renewed and your attitude is going to change. So it's all about knowing who you already are. It's not about becoming. It's about who you already are. And I will invite you in this same theme to... I'll add the link in the description. I'll invite you to check out the Newman Training of Pastor Kerry Blake. It is like it explains completely the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant and who you are in Christ in the new covenant. And it has a lot of confessions that you can declare over your life since you are now in the new covenant and not in the old covenant. So I hope this helps. I will end with this quote by Smith Wigglesworth. Um, As we continue to be filled with the spirit, the enemy cannot have an inch of territory in us. As we continue to be filled with the Spirit, the enemy cannot have an inch of territory in ours. Let us pray. Father Lord, God Almighty, I thank you for I am a new creation. Creation in Christ Jesus, a brand new species. I have been recreated in the image of Christ Jesus. All things have passed away and all things are new. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please share this on social media. And do not forget to... Join us tomorrow for the next part and to contact me on social media for testimonies and prayer requests. God bless you. Goodbye.